When your autistic spouse is calm, his or her emotional age will match his or her chronological age. But when your autistic spouse is stressed, he or she will regress to preteen, sometimes older childhood. In other words, you may have a 38-year-old spouse who emotionally now is operating more like a 12-year-old. So there is regression in ASD when the person is anxious. So a quick message to neurotypical wives. If you're married to an autistic husband, he's likely to have an underdeveloped emotional brain, but an overdeveloped logical brain, which means he will be engaged in overanalysis, getting stuck in a thought, rumination, hyper-focusing on only one detail of something, and inaction. What does inaction look like? Well, instead of ready, aim, fire, inaction looks like ready, aim, 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 aim some more, aim, keep aiming, aim, 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 aim. So one thing I hear from NT wives a lot, they go, well, it just seems so hopeless. You know, where's the hope? Um, if you're talking about changing this behavior, you're right, it is hopeless. Uh, you should give up hope in that area. Yeah, give up hope trying to change him. That is hopeless. But there is hope in you changing your reaction to his behavior. So changing his behavior, that's hopeless. Changing your reaction to his behavior, there's all kinds of hope there. And for those empty wives that are still in denial, that someday he'll get it. Someday he'll do better. Someday he'll try harder. Someday we'll be happy again. There's got to be hope there somewhere. So for those of you who still think that way, then do yourself a favor, get a calendar, get next year's calendar, and uh, uh, mark a year from today. So for example, uh, if today is uh, December 1st of 2022, which it's not, but then uh, get a 2023 calendar, and on December 1st, write on the calendar, reality check, okay? A year from now, on a calendar, Write a little note to self, do a reality check. And the reality check is this. How much was I able to change his behavior over the course of the last year? Now, when your answer is, I didn't accomplish anything. In fact, my efforts made a bad problem worse. Then maybe you'll start giving up hope of trying to change his behavior and find hope in changing your reaction to his behavior. Hey guys and gals, this is Mark. Um, I wanted to say that... Uh, Neurotypical husbands, uh, in other words, those who don't have autism, that are married to a female with autism, that is a very underserviced population. Not only this neurodiverse couple where she's the one that's autistic, but the guy doesn't get any support as far as, you know, what to do with his version of Cassandra syndrome. Yes, his version of feeling emotionally deprived and somewhat uh, emotionally abused. So what I want to do is I want those who are watching this video, who are a neurotypical husband, I want you to comment below this video and describe what you're going through. Good, bad, and the ugly. So in this way, the other men, neurotypical men, that read the comments below the video will go, okay, well, I'm not alone. Because I thought it was just me. But there's a bunch of other people going through the same thing. So, to the neurotypical husbands, use the comment section below and tell us a little bit about what's going on, what's troubling in this neurodiversity that you're experiencing. So, thank you in advance. I will be reading every comment. Quick message to neurodiverse couples. Know that each party is describing their truth. It's okay to have more than one way of looking at things, okay? So don't try to correct their filter, in other words, how they interpret events, and don't spend any time whatsoever trying to convince the other person that your perspective is the only correct one. So quick message to all the autistic spouses out there uh, who want to um, have a better relationship with their, in this case, neurotypical spouse. What do you have to do before you can have a better relationship with your neurotypical spouse? You have to reduce your anxiety because your anxiety gets in the way on so many different levels. If you've watched any of my other YouTube videos, anxiety is almost always at the core of your relationship difficulties with your NT wife in this example. So you have to reduce your anxiety. What do you have to do before you can reduce your anxiety? You have to relax. What do you have to do before you can relax? 
you're going to have to slow down cognitively and physically. You have to slow your mind down. You got to slow your body down. Literally slow it down. What are you going to have to do before you can slow your mind down? You're going to have to focus on breathing several times a day. You're going to have to be a deliberate thinker. I'm just going to sit here for a while and focus on my breath. In breath, out breath. What do you got to do before you can slow your body down? You're going to have to move slowly. You're going to have to move slowly. Get up from your chair slowly. Sit down slowly. Walk slowly. Drive slowly. Talk more slowly. Pretend like you're a 95-year-old man or woman. Slow down, buddy. Slow it down. What's your rush to get to the finish line? Which is death. And if you have ASD level one, you know your average lifespan is about 54. Don't race to the finish line. The more you slow down, the further the finish line is from your current location. The more you slow down, the further away the finish line. The more you physically slow down and slow your mind down through breath work, the more you relax. And the more you relax, the more you reduce your anxiety. And the more you reduce your anxiety, the more you're in a better position to have quality time, quality relationships. Reverse engineer this thing, okay? Hey guys, this is Mark, and I have a message to the neurodiverse couples out there. And I'm not referring to one particular spouse. This is for the NT spouse and the ASD spouse both. Chronic anger is resentment. That's point number one. Chronic anger is resentment. Point number two, chronic anger and resentment will cause physical health problems. Chronic anger and resentment will cause cancer in some cases, autoimmune disease, heart disease, high blood pressure, brain fog, and so on. That's point number two. Point number three is really a question, and I want you to ask yourself, you're going to compare you to your spouse, who is having the most physical health problems? You or the other party? And who seems to be the most resentful? Hmm. And is the one who's having the most health problems also the one who's possibly the most resentful? Do some soul searching on that. You can fight or you can heal, but you can't do both at the same time. You can fight or you can heal both emotionally and physically, but you cannot do both at the same time. It's just that black and white. There is no gray area. If there's a lot of fighting, no healing. Moderate amounts of fighting, no healing. Just a little bit amount of fighting, no healing. Just thinking about fighting. We're not actually fighting. I'm just thinking about it. No healing. Why? Because any of the above will cause your body to excrete a little bit of cortisol and adrenaline, which keeps you in some version of fight or flight, which means you're now not engaging your parasympathetic nervous system, and you can only, only, only heal when your parasympathetic nervous system is engaged. So, fight to one degree or another, or think about fighting, or heal. One of the two, you can't do both. <laughs>